good morning and welcome to this episode of Inside the Vault. Today, we're excited to have joining us Avi Shemesh of the CIM Group. Avi is a co-founder and principal of CIM Group with more than 25 years of active real estate infrastructure and lending experience. Since co-founding CIM in 1994, Mr. Shemesh has been instrumental in building the firm's real estate, infrastructure, and debt platforms. He serves on CIM's investment and real estate management committees, providing guidance on the diverse opportunities available across CIM's various platforms. Avi is responsible for CIM's long time relationships with strategic institutions and overseas teams essential to acquisitions, portfolio management, and internal and external communication. Uh, Avi, I know that's a lot. You do a lot. Well, welcome to our, uh, our episode today, and thank you for joining us. Terrific. Thank you very much for uh, allowing the opportunity to spend the time. Well, it's nice to meet you, and we've heard so much about CIM and about you through the years. It's nice to be able to talk to you. So let's jump in. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in. My first question is really kind of a general question about CR, CIM, um, and that is you have an impressive history of owning and operating real estate since 1994. Uh, for those of for those who are not familiar with CIM, even in our industry, would you give us some background on how CIM started and where you are today? Terrific. Thank you again. So we formed CIM in 1994. Uh, at the time, three partners: uh, Shaul Kuba, Richard Ressler, and myself. Uh, we, our focus was to really capture the urbanization that was taking place in the U.S. that was disproportionately small relative to the rest of the developed world. And the, the, the foundation was very strong as the partnership was extremely strong. Uh, Sheldon and I knew each other since we were kids. We knew Richard seven, eight years before we formed CIM. And we had a very clear direction to what it is that we would like to do. So we started to focus on certain districts within the major metropolitan areas, started in Southern California, Northern California, then East Coast, and today throughout all the major uh, metropolitan areas in the US and some of the Latin American uh, cities. Uh, and the idea from the beginning was to be product non-specific, develop a lot of the expertise in-house. And that was the thing that at the time, in 1994, you saw a lot of very good investors, developers uh, that were product specific. And when we looked at the urban core, we saw the advantage to look at it as a discipline by itself is the ability to come and see what is missing in that urban community. Mm -hmm. Is it retail? Is it residential? What type of residential? What type of retail? Uh, offices? And then it, it started flowing into infrastructure and the support of those communities. And we took the time to really qualify communities. So each and every one of our communities, which must the district within those cities, we do a lot of work anywhere from six months to sometimes five years to qualify those communities. And once we qualify them, we invest heavily in those communities. So having that knowledge, having the expertise to really fulfill what the community needs and not what you necessarily know or you like, uh, made a big difference and made those communities really thrive and be in a much better position for the people who live in those communities and for new people that are coming into those communities to, for the communities to thrive. And over the years, we have done a number of projects that have been anywhere from few million dollars to few billion dollars and anywhere in between. 
So when we come to the community, we look for what is missing and we, we build that. We, we invest in the products that the community needs. And some of the examples over the year have been a, in California, downtown LA, we developed seven and a half acres at the time when it was the first residential unit in, to be built in downtown LA, the first supermarket in downtown LA. Hollywood and Highland was a marquee investment for us. It was developed by someone else, but we have acquired it and turned it around significantly. A 432 in uh, New York City was a very meaningful investment in our first investment in New York City and many have followed. In uh, Austin, Texas, a, the independent, a tall building that we have just completed about a year ago, a sea home power plant was another, was one of our first investments in uh, a Austin, Texas. And in many of those cities and throughout the country, we have projects with different scales and different type of projects, uh, which become really iconic projects within those communities. And when we invest, we invest today across the risk spectrum. And what we mean there is that we invest in opportunistic investments where we acquire, we change the use of the asset, uh, or we position it, we uh, lease it, or we build from the ground up. Then we have uh, stabilized the, our core uh, assets, which is an odyssey type uh, investments where we invest in the same communities that we have qualified and where we believe that they're outside uh, elements that are improving those communities, both with our action and other people in the communities. And those assets typically, and now we can look back, have outperformed the index significantly. Uh, then we have a debt platform where we issue loans, anywhere from bridge loans, construction loans, and we do that with a lot of the sponsors that we invest equity with. So based on the risk taken, we decide whether we want to invest in the equity or the debt. And finally, we have our infrastructure platform that has been very prolific over the last 17 years, where we are investing an infrastructure that is supporting those same urban communities. So we have a number of investments that are water-related investments, anywhere from water banks, water uh, treatments, uh, water rights. We have significant projects on the renewable energy side. Uh, we have uh, a, a company that develops utility-scale solar uh, facilities throughout the world especially in developing countries. Uh, we have in California, in the Central Valley, one of the largest projects uh, that is being built in the world, that's up to 2.3 gigawatt. Uh, that translating it to homes that it will power is approximately 800 to 1,000 homes to a million homes, depending on the capability. And, uh, aggressively investing in different types of renewable energy, uh, recycling, uh, in uh, transportation, and very much towards the green energy and uh, sustainable uh, investment. Yeah. So it sounds like, Avi, thank you for that. It sounds like you're definitely not a one size fits all. It sounds like you take your time to go in and do your research and then customize the investment strategy based on what you have learned about the community. Um, and, and that sounds like it's probably one of the, uh, the differentiators uh, about your firm uh, compared to others. On that note, what, what do you believe are the primary competitive advantages that set CIM apart in the marketplace? I think first and foremost is the team. 
we have approximately a thousand people, 1062 to be precise. Uh, and that's a tremendous competitive advantage. A tremendous competitive advantage from the sense that we start with qualifying the communities. Qualifying the community is a very long process. As I said earlier, it takes sometimes two years. And it's not done by one team, it's done by, done by different teams within CIA. The investment right. team, our leasing team, our property management team, legal, development, construction, all of those groups will go at different times and assess their view of the community because as we mentioned, we want to be adding, making that community better. So we want to make sure that we can really add to that community and make it better. Once we qualify that community, then having the team that can actually add value to the asset is really key for us. We're less focused on we'll buy the asset, leverage it high, and believe that the market will continue to grow. Those investments are good, but that's not our strategy. Our strategy is we need to know everything there is to know about a given community. And we will have, today we have over 100 communities that we have qualified. They all reside in the top 20 metropolitan areas in the US. And every investment will have a business plan. What is it, how are we adding value here? Not relying on the financial, financial engineering. We have a very strong capital markets group, but we rely on that business plan to how we create the value. Every step along the way, we measure ourselves against where the market is, what's going on in the market, how are things changing in order to decide do we continue to execute on our plan. And the best way to look at it is really through downturns. How did our funds perform during downturn? So first, again, the team. Second is the community qualification. And the fact that we have multiple communities, so as one community will get overheated because of its success and because it's thriving, we don't have to continue. We will continue to bid on assets in that community, but we may not continue to invest there. And we have the option to invest in communities that are now at the beginning of that process or in the middle of that process. So the community-based focus is really critical to be in a position that we can make sure that the assets worth more tomorrow, the rents are higher, and the value is greater tomorrow than today. And the third piece is really the discipline and, and more than the discipline, it's really the, the, the way that we look at investments, the way that our, our strategy, our philosophy of how we invest. And that became really part of the DNA of the company. And it, it's relying on the data that we know about those communities the information that we have, looking back 20 years to different empirical data, understanding those communities and relying on our ability to improve the asset and create the value, and because that is our primary goal here in creating the company is creating a company that will provide investors, small or large, with value, that when we invest, we can do everything that we can in order to meet the, uh, what we presented to the investors re related to their investment, and not meet it when the market is good. It meet it when the market is good, when the market is so-so, and when the market is bad. So that discipline, that is engraved in the, in the way we do the underwriting. And when you look at our underlying leverage levels, you see that the value created is created at the asset level, and not at the financial level. Yeah, that's extremely helpful, Avi. I appreciate you taking the time to explain that. You know, when CIM purchased uh, 
uh, much of coal or all of coal several years back. Uh, a lot of people didn't really know uh, who CIM was. And so to learn these things now uh, is very helpful, very enlightening. On that note, uh, let me ask this. Uh, as a company, you initially focused on the institutional market. Uh, so why is it that uh, CIM decided to acquire coal capital and enter the retail distribution space. What was it? What was the catalyst there for you guys to do that? The catalyst is really the same goal that we had at the beginning. Our goal is to be for everyone who invests with us. We don't look at people as investors. We look at everyone who invests with us as a partner. And our goal is to take the partnership that we had among ourselves, the partnership that grew to include more principles within CIA, to be the best partner to everyone who is becoming part of the CIM funds, part of the CIM family, whether it's people that work within CIM, people that build buildings for CIM, our tenants, our investing. Each and every one of those are our partners. And our job is to be the best partner that we can be. Right. So what we believe then, and we believe it stronger today than before, is that an investor is an investor, a partner is a partner. Whether you're working, you're investing through one of the largest pension funds, or if you're investing your life saving, or you're investing some, some capital that you have just gained recently. We treat everyone the same. And we believe that we can bring that institutional quality level of asset of management, of adding value to that segment, to the RIAs, to the broker dealers, at the same level that we perform for institutional investors. Because when you look at the underlying beneficiary, who's really who we're working for, it's the same people, whether you're being represented through one of the large pension funds or the medium-sized uh, pension funds, or you're going through a broker dealer or an RIA, you have the same desires, the same goals to, to maximize uh, your returns and do it in a safe way and not waste too much money in between. And we believe then, and we believe stronger today, that we can deliver that. When we started CIM, we started with our own equity, then we had some uh, individuals who invested alongside with us. Then we went uh, in the direction of the institutional market. And today we're at a point where we can accommodate everyone and provide that exemplary experience that, and we do everything we can in order to improve, whether it's our leasing, whether it's our property management, every aspect that we do, we try every day to be better in order to deliver and we deliver equally to all investors. Yeah, well, no doubt uh, you do that, uh, Avi. You've got a tremendous, uh, there's a tremendous uh, following and respect for your firm in the space today, I think everyone knows the, the, the character, the high caliber, uh, the honesty and integrity uh, that, uh, that is built at CIM and has been built since 1994. We're actually glad to have you uh, in this retail market channel. And we appreciate the commitment that you've made to this channel. And um, unfortunately, we're out of time, uh, but that gives us a, a, a much better taste of who CIM Group is, what your goals are, uh, and, and how someone could learn even more about CIM and uh, the great team that you've assembled, assembled. I'm glad you mentioned that because it is a terrific team that you have assembled, assembled at CIM. So anyway, thank you for joining us today. If, My pleasure. If, thank you very much for your time. If someone wants to find out more about uh, CIM Group, how would they best they, do The best way to reach us is on our website. There's access to each and every person. That's uh, cimgroup.com. Great, great. 
Well, to our listeners today, that's going to wrap things up for us uh, from Inside the Vault this episode. We appreciate you joining us. We hope you'll plan on joining us again, and we hope you have a great day. And Avi, thank you again. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye.